Verse 6, and foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord, to serve him, to love the name of the Lord, and to worship him, and all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it. In other words, that's doing church. In other words, the gospel is going to go even to the Gentile and to the wicked, and they will connect themselves unto the Lord, and God will accept them. And when they come together in worship and in prayer and in service one with another, they will not desecrate the things of God. And then he goes on to say this, and who hold fast to my covenant, verse 7, these I will bring to my holy mountain. He was referencing Jerusalem, that to my holy mountain is about Jerusalem. I will bring you back to Jerusalem. I'll bring you back to the holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Give them joy in my house of prayer. I want to stop there for a second, folks, because it's been coming to us for months now about the need to pray, about being praying Christian people, about being praying children of God. Not just feeding the hungry or clothing the naked or giving and serving them to the poor, but mighty Christians in the things of God, my house will be house that is called a prayer. Now, let's make it modern day today. What does the New Testament tell us about what we are, about what you are? Paul said this, you are now the temple of the Holy Ghost. In other words, individually, you are the house of God. We came into a building that we call a sanctuary, and we practice doing things that we call church. But let me tell you something. If he does not sit on the throne of your heart, we're going to struggle with those things. If he doesn't sit on the throne of our souls, our minds, our thoughts, and our emotions, we're going to struggle from time to time with those things. But if the Lord Jesus Christ sits on the throne of our lives, then it is in this house I will make it a place of prayer. Amen. I will be a prayer warring person for Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, I just firmly believe that before the end of the year, somebody, somebody is going to get something from God that they could never have imagined. You just hang in there with me now. Hang in there with me now. Seek the Lord and seek His face while He may be found. Because God's got something that's poured out. He's already poured it out from heaven. It just hasn't got here yet. It's already been poured out. It just, it just takes time to get from there to here. But it's on its way. For somebody, it's on its way. I hope I'm part of that. I hope you're part of that. I hope we're part of that. I know Sarah Lee's part of that. Hallelujah. People, I believe this. Now listen, I'm going to prophesy to us. The scripture tells us, and I hope you're praying. Every day in your prayer closet, you must pray. For the Lord said, pray unto the Lord of the harvest that he sent forth laborers. I hope you're praying every day that God will send forth laborers. We need laborers here in Lapway, Assembly of God Church, but not just here in Lapway. We need laborers around the world. So while you're praying to the Lord of the harvest that he sent forth laborers, God will send forth laborers where he needs to send forth those laborers. And I'm prophesying, I believe laborers are on their way to this church. Someone asked me a while back, quite a while back, Pastor, what is it, what is it that we need the most? I said, we need these, these are the two things we need the most. We need laborers and money. We need laborers and finances. And I'm here to tell you, I think both of them are on the way. <laughs> it does not matter to God how many enemy troops there are. It makes no matter to God that this accent is at the bottom of the river. If someone will stand up and declare, axe head float, it will float to the top of the river. And then Elijah will say, reach in and grab it. What a great miracle of the word of God. And I'm here to tell you, God's going to make somebody's axe head float. These things I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar and my house will be called for a second time 
a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. Yes. People, I'm here to tell you, I believe laborers are on the way. Yes. I believe people are going to come to La Puebla Sunday God Church. And I believe finances are going to make their way with them. And I believe, I believe, I believe breakthrough, breakthrough. It's just a matter of when it's going to get here, not if it's coming, but when. Can you say amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now quickly as we begin to wind down. Bible study people, turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 42. We studied this the other day. We talked about it. Now I'm going to close with this. Psalms, chapter 42. People, hear what I say. Man is not our resource. God's our resource. Amen. If we look to the right unto man, if we look to the left unto man, all we're going to get is incredible discouragement and disappointment. That's right. We must not bring what we see man over here and what we see man over here and bring those two things together to blur our vision of keeping our eyes upon the cross and the throne of Jesus Christ, say amen. amen. We must not. If we stay at the source, Jesus Christ is the source. He'll choose who's to come. He'll choose who's to pay. He'll choose what source is going to make its way. Can you say amen? amen. He is the source. Let us not look to man, right or left, but let us look straight ahead. Hallelujah. And I want to conclude this morning with this great scripture, and we sing this chorus. Psalms chapter 42, and beginning with verse 1. As the deer pants for the streams of water. Oh, my soul pants for you, oh God. And the word pant means with a passion. There's a longing for it. There's a desire for it. A longing for it. A desire for it. Let, let, hear, what I'm, hear what I'm going to say. When we turn our hearts and our minds and our souls and spirits towards God in such a way. Last week I preached on Thursday. And when we create for ourselves a thirst so that we pant for God, we pant for God. What that does is this. It reduces those things that we make too important of our lives. Things that we make too important to us. When we pant for God, it makes those things that shouldn't be so important to us less important and when those things that we make too important for us in our lives less important, then that's when the Word of God can make a breakthrough into our souls, minds, hearts, and spirits. Amen. Because you see, the devil is like a mouse with a megaphone. And he talks like this. And we hear those voices. And on the other hand, the Holy Spirit whispers. Jesus Christ doesn't yell at us to get our attention. He knocks up. He doesn't pound on our doors and he doesn't try to kick them down. Are we taking time to hear? Does our soul pant for the things of God? People, I'm here to tell you something. I'm a living example. I've been doing this my entire life. And as my soul pants for God more and more, things that used to be really, really important to me are becoming less and less important to me. And what I'm discovering is an incredible breakthrough of God's Word into my own soul, my own heart, and my own mind to the point where I can prophesy to you and to say, if you've been seeking God, your breakthrough is on its way. Your breakthrough is on its way. Amen. It's not a matter of when or a matter of if. It's a matter of when. It's coming down and just takes time from heaven to earth to fall. But it's come. And somebody is going to get something from God that they never even imagined could be possible. I'm telling you. Before the end of the year, 
God's going to get you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me wrap this up. As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God. For the living God, it thirsts for the living God. And when, O oh God, can I go and meet with you? And I believe God is saying, it's coming soon. Hear what this preacher is saying. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying through his gifts. It's coming. It's coming soon. Your breakthrough is coming soon. Stay faithful to the things of God. Stay faithful to the things of the church. Let us enjoy church. Let us do church. Let us enjoy gathering together and edifying one another. Hallelujah. For that pleases God. That's blessing unto the throne of God. Hallelujah. And that breakthrough is on its way. Seek his face. For the fervent righteous prayer, or the fervent prayer of a righteous man, availeth much. Get into your prayer closet. Can we not give God 15 minutes a day to get alone with God and to cry out to God and to seek him while he may be found? I challenge us once again, for those of us who believe that he is, we first must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And if you're diligently seek him, your reward's on the way. Yeah. Your reward's coming. And maybe it's already here and we just don't know it yet. Open the package. He says, I will give you joy in my house of prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll give you joy in my house of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go meet with God? Heavenly Father, we just love you this morning. Oh, Holy Spirit, we embrace you today. We embrace you today. We embrace you today. I pray, Lord, that if there be anything here this morning, it's holding any of us back. In Jesus' name, move us forward. It's time to move on. The blessings of the Lord await those in the future. And I pray, God, a manifestation of your presence in that word.